Uh, you want money to be spiritual, money can be very, very spiritual. And if you, you want money to be scary, money can be very scary because people、uh, lose their lives over money. So, money can have a healing power for some people. What is the happiest, most ethical, obviously legal way that you recommend today for somebody to become a millionaire? I think the most important thing is that likability, your ability to make friends. Because people want to buy from friends and the people they trust. The more you appreciate in your life, the, the, the more appreciation you, you receive. In, the, in our society, that usually comes along with a, a higher pay. What's interesting about money is that you have to learn how to play the games. So, a lot of people they try to stop playing the games because they are scary to lose. They feel scared to lose a game. But you have to keep losing wisely, otherwise, you cannot win. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. So, my guest today is money and happiness expert Ken Honda. Who's a best selling self development author in Japan with book sales surpassing 8 million copies since 2001? And his latest book is called Happy Money The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. And bottom line, everybody, is your money smiling or is it frowning? And so,、uh, Ken, how can we tell if our money is happy? And、uh, I just want to say thank you for investing your time with us here at the Seven Figure Squad. Thank you so much and salam up to you, Matt. I'm so honored.、Uh, I, have huge, I have huge respect for、uh, you know, America and your heritage and、uh, your background. I did a little homework and I really, the more I know, get to know more about you, I have、uh, more respect for you.、Uh, your service you know,、um, um, mentality that you're serving other people, that's so beautiful. So thank you for your invitation. Well, it makes me happy.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. That, and that, that is exactly、uh, how you can tell. When you receive money, does that make you feel like, oh, so happy? You know, you get a little money from your grandparents saying happy birthday, and it's like $5 in it. Like, you know, grandpa, you know, these days we can't buy anything with $5, but at least it brings you so much happy feeling, right?、And、so it's not the amount of money you receive, it's the feeling. And also when you spend it, Does that make you feel happy? Like your, your happy money, you know,、uh, handed out to the, the cashier or uh, tipping uh, somebody, waiting person? And then do you feel like a tipping、uh, 5% more、uh, makes you feel happy?、Yep. Or like, ooh, I don't want to pay anything, you know, because that was a lousy service. So、um, when you,、uh, whenever you pay、uh, happy money, that brings you joy. Amen. You know, I, I,、uh, I've been on the other side of money for a good part of my life,、uh, Ken. So I'm, I'm 47 years old today, and I've, I've only started coming into money、um, now in my early 40s. So, really, the last maybe six years of my life. But for a good part of my life, I was a single father. I had, you know, you know, you know, child custody and family support type issue. What a piece of drama that is. And so, my guidance with a lot of people is、uh, if you really want happy money, you got to make sure you pick a happy girlfriend that turns into a happy fiance that turns into a happy wife. Everything is connected, isn't it? It sure is. It sure is. And so,、uh, my feeling when I get money today is an overwhelming amount of humbleness and gratitude because I remember the times where I used to get paid every first and 15th of the month in the military、um, $850 a paycheck. And,、um, and my rent was $650 in itself. So, my whole entire first paycheck, I'd be left over with $250 bucks or $200. But,、um, and, and that's really I, what I want to start off with this conversation, Ken, is because today during this pandemic, this era where it's essential, non essential, by the way, it's, it's, ev it's、uh, evening over here, our sun's coming down here, and it's morning over there. So, is that, is that correct, the,、mm -hmm. the time frame? And so, Yes. So, Ohio, so, Ohio Gazayamas. The future. <laughs> Next morning. That's right. I was right. I'm talking to the future. So, right.、Um, so how, how do you coach people to get through these times? Because this is something that for a lot of people, they've never been through before. They've never been through a pandemic. They've never been through lockdowns and shutdowns. And not only are they not happy financially, but they're locked down or stuck at their house with relatives and family members that 
a lot of issues start bubbling up. So what are the first steps to getting to the, uh, to the position of gratitude and appreciation and arigato in and arigato out? Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking. It's a big theme. But, you know, something like, something like this keeps happening every 10 years, and the big one happens like every 50 or 70 years. So a lot of our grandparents uh, fought during the war or they were in misery because of the war. So think about it, you know, um, getting all the bombs dropped on you on your, your country, maybe in the war zone. And I know your grandparents or grand grandparents suffer so much. So we are suffering so much, but uh, in a sense that uh, it's not as bad as our ancestors experienced. So first of all, you have to know that something like this happens. So when that happens, you just uh, go on your own or ask for help. We are so good at giving support, giving help, giving love, but we are so bad at receiving one. You know, yeah. sure, sure. When, when your friends are uh, in trouble, you just want to help them. But if you are in trouble, you just don't uh talk about it and then you know uh, you probably lick your wounds in a cave for three days no food <laughs> and then when it's healed you may talk about it you know i was in a, such a ditch and your friends say come on why didn't you tell me so if you're in trouble now is the time to ask for help and uh, we have to ask uh for help and if you have more than enough um, this is the time to share so i love a legend uh legendary <clears throat> folk tales and in the in the times of famine a japanese local philanthropists open up their uh, uh safe and then they stocked uh hundreds of uh, uh rice you know <clears throat> stalkers so uh when that happens uh he is you know willingly uh just share the food uh he collected over the years and uh and and, and he's his people ask him, you have collected all the all this rice, you know, money yeah. uh, for years. Why do you just give away? And yeah. he smiled and said, oh, I just was told by our parents and grandparents that one day something like this happens. So you are the keeper of the wealth. So all the people in the village will not starve. So if you have more than enough you know if you are financially comfortable or wealthy now is a time that you free up all the savings for other people and if only wealthy people's five percent of the money is released for the other one to share we can solve so many problems so now is the time to start sharing and asking for help you know the, the interesting thing about giving you know because you, you have your hand and the, the natural tendency is, well, my God, I'm, I'm giving out my nest egg. Mm -hmm. You know, wh why in the moments like that where it's not a natural thing to do? Because I, I can see a lot of single parents. I was a single parent, and I was, I was caught under, you know, paranoia. Like, I, I don't know how I'm going to pay next month. So, for example, in this era, I think a lot of people are considering starting a business. But they're afraid to do so because they don't want to part with their three, four, five hundred bucks. They don't want to part with three, four, five thousand dollars. They don't want to part with... 30, 40, 50,000 dollars, depending on what the size of the investment to start a new business is. Can, mm -hmm. can you walk us through that? Because you became financially free, financially independent at 29 years old. Mm -hmm. And so, so how did you go about making your money and how did you go about getting to that point of independence and freedom? Right. You have to start small. You know, it, it's, it's the same with any kind of business. And also, uh, when you fall, you have to fall right. You know, if you fall bad, you're going to die. But if you know how to fall and not and get uh, uh, fatal injuries, you can always come back and just start riding. It's like a bicycle. You know, the first uh, 10 times or 20 times, you probably stumble and fall. But you have to I think that's part of the deal. So people who don't want to fall any time before you get to master how to ride a bike, you're not in the right place. So uh, you have to uh, just know uh, your game is a different game. So the rules are different. Uh, if you're working for a corporate environment, uh, your rules are don't make mistakes. And if you make mistakes, try to make it to other people's problem instead of yours. But if you're an entrepreneur, you have to be accountable for everything. That means you have to make uh, first 100 mistakes fast and you have to learn fast. 
And in case of uh, in failure, in case of uh, um, losing everything, you have to have an insurance policy. That's, uh, I, I call it friends and mentors. You know, um, I, I have no financial worries. The reason is that I don't have any debt, but even if I lose everything, which is very unlikely, but uh, uh, my friends will not let me fall. You know, I have helped hundreds of my friends and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people uh, I helped over the uh, last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So those people will not uh, let me fall. They will just come and rescue me. So when, when you start uh, your um, uh, business, you also have to have that kind of insurance uh, policy too. How many friends can you rely on when something goes sour? You know, can you, uh, do you have friends who let you stay for like two weeks or a month uh, for free without even asking questions? Mm -hmm. If you have all the friends, you're okay, you're good to go. But if you're so afraid of money, afraid of the world, the people will not be nice to you. And if you don't have any friends, I think it's going to be hard for you on the path of free, uh, f financial freedom. That's what I think. Ken, when, when you're, you're, you're a big gifter, you know, when I'm reading about your story and I'm reading about how you're networking with other people, because I'm, you know, for example, I just moved from Chicago down here to Dallas. So I'm establishing a new network of, of friends and business contacts. So how would you, if, if you're my consultant, that's your background, right? It's accounting and, and consulting. Yeah. Right. So, so if, if you're consulting me on, on, on relationship building and the, mm -hmm. now I've got, you know, if I was brand new and I just started a new business, I relocated to a new city, how would you advise me on building new friendships? Uh, I think I'll first ha uh, try to make friends with old entrepreneurs, you know, and then uh, I become uh, uh, their, their great friends. You know, I may not be like a, um, any asset to them, but at least I can uh, have some interesting conversation. So I was a great, good, great listener. So uh, I, I could ask right, I could ask right questions uh, for them to answer. So by answering me question, uh, uh, questions I ask, they really get like, okay, this is the direction I'm going. So I'll make friends with old entrepreneurs and uh, probably not so much business at the beginning. But okay. if I say uh, the chairman of, com uh, chairman of uh, um, uh, Chamber of Commerce becomes your best friend, he's going to connect you or she's going to help you. So I think the most important thing is that likability, your ability to make friends, because people want to buy from friends and the people they trust. And so um, first, uh, when I started out as an author, I became friends with best selling authors and the editors and the company uh, publishing owners. I started from low and then kind of moved up uh so in terms of my connection so like uh, uh hang around and make friends and uh, making friends is the best policy uh the reason why my books are out in 40 different countries and sold 8 million copies is that i have great friends and mentors i have uh my mentor is jack canfield the chicken wow. soup of the soul yeah. and john gray dr john gray you know wow. man from mars women from, you know those people if you just become close to, to them and their family, and they're going to help you. So Jack is, uh, wrote an endorsement for me, and John Gray let me stay in his house for uh, three days, and he coached me personally uh, what to do, what not to do when you become uh, an inter international best-selling author. So the mindset is super important because when people uh, look at me with John Gray or Jack Canfield, uh, people think I'm sort of on the same level, you know, so like they uh, give me enough respect and uh, and opportunities. So if you just move into uh, any town, like I, I don't mind going to, you know, Cape Town or London or wherever that is, I'll just start making friends. And then I just learn about business, maybe for free. And then uh, I would say, uh, just uh, feed me and I'm going to work for free. And I'll probably uh, learn all the tricks uh, in the trade. You know, and then I'll learn. I'll ask probably uh, hundreds of questions. And then I'll, I'll just try to see what's the problem because they think, you know, certain things for granted. And I'm really sure that they're doing things uh, because they're, they've been doing it for the past 20 years. No questions. And you probably strike the right question. Why do you do that? And he'll go like, hmm, that's a good question. I've never thought about it. I, you know, I was told 
to just uh, use this you know frying pan this way for when i was like 15 and i've been using this for past 50 years and uh you know the business opportunity opens up so there are so many opportunities so you know i i can go anywhere and just start my business and uh, and become a millionaire in five years very interesting you know in your experience because men and women look at money differently yes how how do men express happiness with money Uh and how do women in your experience express happiness with money you know, I don't want to generalize so much, but mm-hmm. there is this a certain tendency. I'd say a uh, person with uh, male energy and the person with female energy, because there are uh, women who have more masculine energy, and they're you know yeah. they may they may be biologically uh, female, but they are more manly. So I would say uh, male energy people tend to feel happy when they accomplish some things. You know, like a warrior, they go they accomplish something get something like cars and you know like some social status they feel happy but the the person with a female energy they tend to feel joy when they're connected when they feel appreciated when they feel uh like they're working uh they're they're helping other people they just feel uh, the the deep connection so it's a little bit of difference but i think i don't mind having both you know having uh, just acquire something, and at the same time, feeling the uh, strong bonds. And uh, that's something I'd recommend you do that. Uh, but some people uh, like it uh, one way uh, more than the other. It's interesting how you put that. It, you, you didn't base it on gender, you based it on energy. And mm-hmm. that is so interesting. Um, you know, when, when I, I was stationed in, when I was in the United States Marine Corps, I was stationed in Japan. I was stationed, in, more specific, I was stationed in Okinawa. Mm-hmm. And I was there in... Um, Okinawa, Japan, and and uh, we are you know we are looking to get out and network and connect and you know just enjoy the island. Come find out, you know, is a is a quick side note here, Ken. One of the biggest spots because my unit was filled with Puerto Ricans, right? And some somehow some way they found the salsa clubs in Okinawa, Japan. There were like three or four or five major salsa clubs of people just dancing salsa. Really? It was a cra- it was the craziest thing, and I was like, "Wow, just <laughs> check this out." You know, people look very happy. <laughs> uh-huh. So, speaking of the the the, the economic uh, culture there in Japan, how, how has the turning around of that country now that it's a more of a free market developed free market economy? How has that turned around for people? Because uh, I, I believe there's there's uh, some some I was reading uh, uh, some articles here that people feel in the uh, six day a week rule. And the Japanese businessmen, you know, uh, has, you know, got to climb up the corporate ladder and they're sleeping in the trains and they're sleeping on their desk because mm-hmm. they have a hundred year business plan uh, from their for the yeah, corporate. So how, how do you wrap around work ethic, hard work, dedication, commitment, and also wrap around success and contentment and happiness? Matt, you're sort of asking the wrong guy because look at me. I don't wear a suit and I have a long hair, but <laughs> I can I can talk in general, right? Because uh uh, I never worked for a company in my life. So I started, uh, I, I was very independent when I was 22. I was making uh, way more than like $10,000 a month. So I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, not, I, I didn't really belong to Japanese mainstream, even though I went to um, one of the highest um, uh, prestigious universities. So all my friends are in the corporate uh, world. So I know what you're talking about. So. Uh, working too many hours, um, they usually die, right? They, they, there's a term karoshi. Wow. So, but Japanese people are driven uh, for, uh, for uh, bigger, bigger causes. So they dedicate for their families and honors. And uh, uh, that mentality is extended to a company. You know? So like they, they want to work to death to protect and serve the family. But you sort of understand you're know, just you're dedicating your lives to the military, the country. So it's sort of like the same thing. So uh, uh, doing uh, for a bigger cause is beautiful, but at the same time, so you could you tend to lose who you are. You know, uh, in the military, I, I think you're asked to dedicate your life to the service, right? Uh, so like uh, uh, when you're in the military, you may ask yourself, "Where is my happiness? Your happiness." is in helping your friends, helping the, uh, the military and the country. So, but you, you cannot keep doing it that way for the rest of your life because you need to have your own life too. So that's why I retire at the uh, younger age. 
And uh, because of me, a lot of young Japanese people started retiring and having long hair, so which is kind of fun. But still, a majority of Japanese people, uh, they love uh, working for uh, big companies or like even if they have their, uh, uh, their own business, they're dedicated to a business. So I just um, teach these people, don't sell your soul. You know, business is just business. So don't get sucked into it is what I teach. So I really understand wh where you come from. How did you, how did you get about derailing from the typical corporate America there in business? How did you start thinking more independently than the rest of your peers growing up? You know, I had a great mentor. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, Wahei Takeda, who's called Warren Buffett of Japan. So instead of uh, he, growing his own business, uh, he, he could have probably built an, an empire of uh, cookie business. He made his fortune by selling cookies for babies. But instead of, um, uh, instead of taking his company to public, he chose to invest all his money in public companies. So he ended up uh, becoming the major, sh major shareholders of more than uh, 100 public companies in Japan. That's why he's called Warren Buffett of Japan. So he had a big influence on me. Instead of, instead of working in the system and instead of working for the system, you own the system. So you have freedom to do whatever you want. So I achieved my financial independence in my uh, late 20s. And for four years, I did nothing but changing diapers, like, you know, just playing cards with my wife. And uh, I had a little deck, you know, in front of my two-year-old baby. So we just play all, all day. So uh, it's so against Japanese uh, work ethics. <laughs> and I could wow. retire young, you know, forget it. So, Mr. but that, you know, you find happiness in a little time. Was, the, was this Mr. Takeda the one that would give away gold coins because somebody was smiling? Yes, exactly. So I witnessed a few times, and whenever he gives a, a solid gold coin, he, actually he has chunk in his pocket, and whenever he finds a nice smile, lady or you know, a guy, like you have the best smile in the world, and she goes like, really, right? And then uh, I want to give you a gold medal. I everybody thinks wow. it's a joke, right? And then come over here, and he, and he hands over this gold coin. And uh, if you know, Matt, uh, if you hold a uh, uh, gold coin, it's heavy, right? Yeah. So you know it's real. Yeah. So like, wow, I've never touched gold in my life. Uh, who, who would? Usually people don't uh, have experience of uh, having a, a solid gold coin in, mm -hmm. in their hands. And it's just a wow, I never just, wow, this is very heavy. And he says, it's yours. And really, you know, it's, it, it's about uh, 1000 US dollars worth of it. Yeah. And uh, she cries because not, not, not many people have complimented the smile, even her own mother. And he says, you're blessing the world. So you just keep blessing the world for the rest of your life. And just, he just is so happy uh, by blessing uh, the person because she's going to definitely keep smiling for the rest of her life. That, and I'm sure it's going to uh, bring a lot of happiness to her family, her colleagues, and the clients and customers. So he's like that happy uh, smile giver uh, to everybody he met. Tell you, uh, uh, true story. One of my favorite, don't tell this to anybody. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is I over tip, like way over tip. Like I put a massive tip. Uh, like when the pandemic was, when the pandemic was at its, at its highest, and some of these restaurants were open and people were reluctantly coming out of the house to work the restaurant. I'd be so glad just to over tip that person to give them the support to be courageous enough to work during the pandemic. Great. And, and I, for you. And I'd looked, I, I, get, I sit in my car, I look through the windows, see when they're finally ringing up the ticket. They're like, how shocked uh, they would be. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> is I, that fun? It is fun. It is fun. I, uh, I was buying clothes at a men's warehouse and I noticed this single mom and her two kids were there, and he said, Mom, I really want this belt. I really want this, blah, blah, blah. He's getting ready to go back to school. And I told the sales rep, hey, psst, bring that, my, bring that up on me. Bring that up on me real quick. And uh, he gave me a fist bump. And I just left the men's warehouse knowing that they were blessed, knowing that they were. Nice. And that, that's nice for you. So it's, a, it's, just a, it's a very fun thing to do. Um, you know, when, when we're looking at, Ken, when we're looking at um, money and the way we can, Live our life. For example, if I'm 
just if I just want to be happy with money, and I look at what my job is paying me in, for example, the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, where it is so expensive to live, or if I'm living in New York, if I'm living in Chicago, or I'm living wherever, and it's just so expensive to live, how, how can somebody really be happy knowing they're living under the cost of living in their area? It's They can barely fill up their car with gas and they can barely put food on the table and they might have to get some government assistance. So how would you coach and guide somebody to use the happiness Japanese art of making peace with your money to therefore start increasing. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't really matter where you start from, uh, because, you know, you've heard of all the stories that uh, happy millionaires started from scratch. So just uh, um, you just realize that now is a start. You either go up or go down and it's up to you. So instead of complaining about the situation, uh, I want you to start counting blessings in you. You know, maybe uh, your income is low and you have a hard time uh, making both ends meet, but at least you got a job. <laughs> and if you just lost your job and no money, at least you have health. And you have no health and everything. And then this is a time um, to learn new skills, uh, asking for help. Now, people who can ask for help are actually stronger than the people who give help. So. Uh, if you um, if you want to help other people, you know, uh, just uh, make sure that uh, the other one is stronger than you. So you're learning by giving. And uh, this uh, cycle completes uh, uh, when somebody receives. If you uh, if there is nobody receiving your help, you cannot give. Interesting. So uh, you are uh, by asking for help, you're giving some people a joy of giving. So instead of feeling shame, embarrassment, and guilt and anger, just be there, you know, uh, just enjoy your vulnerability and then uh, give opportunities uh, to other people to support, support you. And, uh, you know, there, they will be there to, to help you. Could be your neighbors. You know, I've, I've heard so many great stories of people helping one another. So just you start your own story. Uh, also, the other thing is that you have to start finding your right, right spot. You know, your, your, your spot is prepared somewhere. You know, if you're just getting a low, low paying job, you have to figure out, sit down and just sit with yourself. What do you want in your life? So instead of just asking for a nice car, a nice house, you know, just sincerely, you have to uh, uh, confront yourself uh, why you are in this uh, financial misery. You know, you probably think, Mm, it's because I have bad luck. No, it's because of your uh, um, financial uh, uh, health. You know, if you're just overweight, it's because of uh, eating too much and not releasing uh, enough or doing some exercises. So the, the reason why you are who you are uh, has reasons. Of course, you know, there may be some bad luck in, involved, but you have to really get yourself back in the, uh, on the right road, right path. That is... Uh, to appreciate what you have and start appreciating uh, whatever is on, on the way. And uh, just uh, uh, if you start appreciating who, who you are, where you are, uh, one of my students was a single mom uh, who was a um, low paid uh, secretary at a small company. And he was uh, bitching about uh, her little pay and her boss not being nice. But she realized that uh, she didn't, she doesn't have a college degree, right? So uh, she just realized, oh, I forgot that he hired me without any skills, without any, you know, a diploma. And she started thanking him first time in her life. And the funny thing is that appreciation toward him really changed him. So in a few months, he gave her a big bonus and then a big raise because he forgot. Uh, she needs uh, support and uh, enough respect. Yeah. So by just uh, sending out respect and appreciation, you get it back. So mo the more you appreciate in your life, the, the, the more appreciation you, re you receive. In, the, in our society, that usually comes along with a, a higher pay and higher um, respect. So if you sort of move up from the, the gutter to a little bit uh, higher and higher, you will probably get to enjoy uh, the choice 
of selecting whatever you want to do. So try to be there so you can serve other people. If you're good at speaking, you should go uh, search for a job like that. If you're good at listening, you can be, find something that just, you know, it's suitable for you. And the more, uh, the closer you get to your, your designated area, you'll be happier and you'll be more abundant. So you know, you know, there's a game like a, a hotter, 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 you know, warmer, cold, right? I, I love the game because the, the, the closer you get to where you're supposed to be, you feel more excited, more energized. And if you're further away from where you're supposed to be, you feel done, you don't want to wake up in the morning. So if you have a hard time getting up in the morning and you're so tired after going home, something is wrong. So ask yourself, where do you want to be to be happy, happier, and also to be able to serve other people in a better way? So if you're just doing that uh, five times in a few years, you'll be in a totally different place. And then finally you get to breathe. And then probably you go back to uh, college or get some education or get some skills and knowledge. And, uh, you know, maybe you stay in a job, but uh, you may be uh, starting your own company. But either way, you are using your skills as your leverage. So your pay is usually a few times higher than you originally got paid. And I have, you know, since my books sold, uh, were sold 8 million copies, I have like hundreds of thousands of testimonials saying, can miracle happen? So, you know, my, one of my uh, fun uh, time is every, every time I walk, wake up in the morning, I have a few males, sometimes 10, 20, telling me how I changed their lives. And so beautiful. Sometimes I cry. It's not a beautiful way to start my day. Of course. So, so I'm sure this thing works. So arigato in, you know, when money comes in, Say arigato or salama, danke, whatever the language, you know, just, uh, just feel the appreciation because they just let go their money, precious money to you. You know, they chose you as a consultant, uh, coach, or a company chose you as an employee. It's a miracle. Like, so when you feel like uh, almost a uh, tears is coming down, like, wow, thank you, boss. You know, uh, thank you for just giving me this, this job. And he was like, oh, really? Okay, great. You know, but after uh, you keep sending all the appreciation energy, you know, it's like the, you know, if you pour a, uh, appreciation to his cup, it overflows. And it usually manifests in, in, the, in terms of uh, nice words and also raise and bonus. Nice. Ken, when we're looking at um, somebody that says, okay, I'm content for a minute, Ken. But man, I just had another kid. Yes. And, and my budget just got exploded and I'm no longer happy. Or my wife uh, wants another room for the kids or they want a, a jungle gym in the backyard or they want, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's okay to want what you want. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens then at that moment when you're no longer happy because your, 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 your goals are getting bigger? You want to mm -hmm appreciate or experience more about life you want to move into the different zip code so what happens then when you don't you were formerly happy and content now what's the, how do we get to the next level now what's 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 the process that's a very good good question matt <laughs> i always ask people to wait okay. you know wait uh for the right time because people spend way uh wait too fast uh their money so and if they could wait a year or a month, you know, uh, they can build some asset, right? People spend it too, too fast, too much. So uh, if you're just getting paid low, I advise you to start saving money. Because, you know, uh, when you're in a stressful situation, you just buy stupid things that you don't, you don't know why you bought it, you know? So, and wealthy people don't because they know they can get it anytime, right? But uh, uh, the people with a financial difficulty, they tend to buy uh, so many junk at the you know, dollar shop. So you have to uh, be content with where you are and then uh, wait for a few months or a few, uh, could be a few years, you know, and then uh, you can say, oh, that's not for me yet. You know, if you just want a new car, you say, that's not good. That's not mine yet. 
but it's sort of coming anyway. So if you serve uh, people more as a, a token of appreciation from God, you get more rewarded, right? Rewards. But you can't ask for rewards without doing anything. Rewards usually come after you help people. So um, you have to uh, do something for, so others will just reward you. So don't be too quick in spending and getting things because um, you know, there are so, so many ways to um, just uh, reward yourself. Like a few years ago, a bunch of my friends and I had dinner and uh, um, we we're talking about what kinds of rewards we're giving when we achieve something, right? So I think I achieved something like five or six million uh, copy of sales. And uh, you know, my friends were saying they're buying Ferrari or like nice cars, they're, just they're buying a house. And my reward, do you know what my reward was? Was that? I got a copy of the the last, uh, the final edition of Harry Potter series. <laughs> and then I kept it in my, uh, on my desk. So my reward is to read the book. Wow. wow. Yeah. And it, what, $10 or $20? But that's what, that's my reward. It doesn't have to be super, super huge. And that was way more exciting for me than getting uh, uh, fancy cars. And uh, so I, uh, you don't have to reward yourself some, with something has value in it. So uh, if you just uh, train yourself to be happier, and instead, you know, I could donate $100,000 instead of buying a car. Mm -hmm. um, just um, I'm helping a lot of single family uh, households now, um, raising a lot of money for them. So uh, that brings me more joy than owning a car and because I have already several cars, you know, um, but uh, so uh, that's how I feel. So that's just don't jump on consump consumption. I think uh, in North America, uh, culturally, I think they are more uh, brainwashed, maybe a little dangerous word to say, to yeah. buy, buy, buy. Yeah, it's sure. almost like uh, scary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are so many subliminal messages in North America uh, than anywhere in the world. And so uh, you have to stop and think, is this me? Or is this somebody pumping me up to buy something? So when you calm yourself, mm -mm, that's not me. It's a commercial <laughs> from the company saying I should get a new car. So it's not my voice. So you have to tell the difference. You know, funny, it's funny you just say it again, because I, I went to the mall and uh, of course you go to the mall where you pass up all the brand names, right? You pass up your Louis Vuitton, you pass up your Versace, you pass up. And, and I'm, so for me, if there's one thing I like to buy, it's uh, Gucci. I'm a Gucci guy. You know, Ooh, I'm a Gucci yeah. guy. I'm a Gucci guy. So, so I'm uh, I'm going to buy a belt, and um, there's a line out out the, you know like all, all the way down the mall just to get into Gucci because they're only allowing four or five people in the store oh, at I a see time, the line. Yes. right? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm about to drop whatever it costs, several hundred dollars for a belt. The last thing I'm doing is standing in the line for an hour just to buy a five hundred dollar belt. <laughs> because I can go to Marshall's, I can go to any other store and get it for you know, 20, 30 bucks. But if I'm going to spend three, four, five, however it is for, for a Gucci belt, there's no way I'm going to feel happy uh -huh. to spend that type of money. Now, if they say, oh, come right in, and they treat customer service, right, I, I feel happy with that. But if I'm not getting that happiness and the customer service and attention, I don't feel happy purchasing. I don't feel good about the brand. And I saw the, all the other stores. Louis Vuitton had the same problem. Versace had the same problem. Like, Yo, and then, and I'm thinking to myself, why are you standing in line? Your time is valuable. What are you sitting here for? You could be reading a book. You could be growing a business. You could be quality, quality time to consume. And so I asked this question to a, a rabbi. I'm, I'd, be interesting, I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about this. And he talked about money being spiritual. Mm -hmm. Okay, now he's, he comes from a Jewish faith, and you come from your, uh, your uh, uh, Zen and, uh, and, and Buddhism. Uh, am I correct in saying that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there a spiritual element to money? Of course. You know, um, uh, money is energy. So uh, it, it changes uh, 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 shape. It's a, sh a shape shifter. You know, uh, my favorite questions to my audience is, if money was a person, who would it be? Oh, good question. Yeah, it could be a fun, loving, you know, uh, like body of mine for like 20 years and you know some somebody to be just have parties with 
or it could be a scary monster who is going to eat you up if you don't do things right. Or a cold person, mean person, or mild, generous, um, loving person. So uh, if uh, you want money to be spiritual, money can be very, very spiritual. And if you, you want money to be scary, money can be very scary because people uh, lose their lives over money. And people lose uh, peace of mind over money. But at the same time, uh, by giving away, say, uh, the other day I gave away uh, $10,000 for uh, uh, a family who, uh, who found out uh, the, the sole income earner uh, f uh, had a cancer. Oh, wow. So he needs to concentrate on that. So uh, I gave that money and everybody cried. So money can have a healing power for some people if they make it to be. But probably you don't get that uh, healing, uh, same healing for you, Matt, if you just get $10,000, you say probably thank you, but your whole family wouldn't cry and just, you know, it doesn't have much of a healing effect. But for some family at the right time, $10,000 is a big, um, you know, um, a game changer. So if you want to use your money spiritually, uh, you can do that too. So uh, money can be a, a, a shape shifter. So it can be whatever you want it to be. Wow. You know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned because I've, I've run across a lot of people that make a lot of money and they're very stingy mm -hmm. with money. They're like hoarding it. Oh, we can't, you know, they put it in the bank because they're afraid to invest. They don't yeah. give it away because they still got to make sure that their nest egg is tight. And But inherently speaking, that's been their programming with money. It's a, a scarcity type of mentality. Yes, but you know, by saving say hundred dollars a month, nobody becomes a millionaire. You know, the millionaire people just move money, move energy, and then they lose games one one way or another. And then after fourth or fifth trial, they succeed. So uh, what's interesting about money is that you have to learn how to play the games. So a lot of people they try to stop playing the games because they are scary to lose. They feel scared to lose a game. But you have to keep losing wisely, otherwise you cannot win. So the money game is a funny thing. I've wrote actually a few books on this. I have to translate them in, into English because it's going to be fun, at least for you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's learning the game. So how, so in your opinion, what is the happiest, most ethical, obviously legal way that you recommend today for somebody to become a millionaire? There are so many different ways. So by so uh, um, I wrote a book, National Bestseller, uh, Do What You Love and Make Sure Money Follows You. And in, in that book, I talk about how to find gifts and how to monetize your gifts. You can be good at singing. You can you can you are maybe good at uh, writing, speaking. Uh, so by using your gifts, you can be a millionaire. You know, I have uh, written so many uh, detailed, practical advice on each section. Like uh, if you want to be uh, a writer, there are so many ways to uh, make a, a million dollars in a you know a book industry. At the same time, you can make millions in a restaurant business, in teaching business, in a dry cleaning business. So just do whatever you love. You know uh, that uh, that I think you understand this. That uh, that you feel like uh, that you lose time. You know because you love it so much. You, you love talking about this subject, I'm sure you just lose track of time, right? Sure, so, of course. <laughs> yeah, if you just are absorbed into this uh, thing that excites you the most, that usually is a key to bring, bring you the first million. And, you know, uh, to become a billionaire, uh, it's a different game. But to make a few million dollars, I think that's a short, shortcut. I like that. Billionaire is a different game. Millionaire is a shortcut. You see, everybody watching this, you should be thinking bigger. So uh, you should be thinking bigger. Um, you have a unique relationship with your daughter. And so yes. as a parent, how would you teach kids? How are you teaching kids about money? So she's witnessed um, uh, how I became successful in, in, uh, in this uh, book industry. So I uh, always told her, um, by sharing your gifts uh, and by sharing what you love, uh, money uh, you get rewarded uh, financially and so uh, she and also she's witnessed uh, so many people starting from scratch as my student 
and then wow. it, they became they ended up uh, becoming millionaires. So uh, they were just uh, wearing you know shabby clothes, but a few years later they're in you know like uh, Chanel and the kind of clothes and then yeah. <laughs> So she noticed the difference, right? And so she asked me all the questions like, Daddy, what changed her? And, you know, I talk about self-image and all that. So uh, she's starting out as a singer. And she's uh, just start, started, but uh, her YouTube views uh, more than 50,000 times uh, over a few months. Uh, her name is Stella. St St Daddy, plug. plug it, Dad. Plug it, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she's uh, really enjoying her music career and uh, she's making music and also so she is good at helping people so I guess she's going to be uh, like a singer slash writer slash right um, speaker so because that's her where her gift lies so uh, I I've always taught her don't fall money just um, find out what you can do and share with other people and they will just uh, bring you money Ken, is there any specific skills that you would prioritize? If, if I said, Ken, what are the top three skills, four skills, five skills that one should adopt in this understanding about being happy with money and, and doing it in a way that uh, is systematic and predictable? Because if making a million dollars is a shortcut and a million dollars is a different game, right. what would be, what, how, how would you identify the skills and which would be number one, number yeah. two, and how would you rank them? Yeah. So first of all, you have to know where your gifts are. You know, you may be good at speaking, writing, cooking. You have to identify what is uh, like two or three things that you're super good at. And you have to improve that skills in that uh, area. So for me, I was good at writing. So I started writing and uh, that wasn't a profession. That wasn't at the professional level. So I started writing uh, like a few page essay and started stapling them and started giving away to, to my friends. And that got popular. So people started calling in. So I printed 3,000. That became another 5,000. And by the time I printed uh, 100,000 copies, a publisher called me. So, uh, you know, uh, your life unfolds that way. So just start finding what you're super good at. And the okay. second system, uh, second is uh, build up your own business model, big business system. For example, uh, the, the reason why they, uh, my publisher prints uh, uh, 50,000 copies at the beginning is that I have so many fan base. You know, I have about uh, uh, half a million people on my list. And uh, when I just talk about my book, uh, I get views of uh, my book uh, podcast is uh, download of 48 million downloads, you know. So uh, so I have that fan base. So if you uh, have that uh, long, uh, strong foundation, and I also have a subscription uh, system. Uh, it's one of the largest online salon. We have about 12,000 membership, wow. uh, each paying $10 a month. Wow. And I started out uh, the same one in English. It's called Arigato Living Community. Uh, we ha have the, at the beginning uh, 500 people, but I think it's going to grow. So if you have the base, set up a system so people can support you. Like say, uh, people uh, could be in Azerbaijan or Congo or uh, in China, whoever likes my material, they're going to buy my books and also they're going to become uh, a community member. So if you have a business model, you have a strong base, uh, people start paying you. And, and if you have a strong connection with the members and people, uh, they're going to keep supporting you. And if you don't betray them, uh, they're going to come back as a royal customer. So for me, I publish many books, right? So uh, when I publish uh, my next book, people are going to uh, order, pre-order without knowing what it's in it. <laughs> it. Yeah, it's like a chef, you know, chef is going to cook something. You don't know what, but you trust chef enough to, to just order a food in advance. Yep. So chef special, if you do a chef special in your own area, how many people are going to buy it? You know, is it like your friend, your best friend and your mom? You know, that's not enough, right? So just start improving your gifts, build a business model and just uh, build a strong, deep connection with people. Some of my readers are like 20 years old and they're now passing down my books to their, to, to their children. So if that happens, uh, you have uh, the next generation people coming in, right? So 
the stronger the base, uh, the higher your income. So uh, if your uh, base is like, uh, say, 100,000 people or 10,000 people or like 50 million people, you know, that will decide how much you're going to make. So how, have a strong, trustworthy relationship with your customers and friends. And that is the beginning to your first million dollars. Wow. Wow. Um, you're cranking out books left and right. I got to ask because I've had a book in me for 12 years. And with all the busyness and all the craziness and having run a business and run a family, it's, it's like finding that process and getting over writer's block. So if you can give us an insight, Ken, on how you have tapped into that creativity that you find out that you're good at, what is your creative process uh -huh. of your new book, book title, yeah. outline, et cetera? Thank you. This is my favorite subject. And I actually really? wrote a book. And also I, I'm teaching uh, how to become a writer seminar, which is very, very popular. Wow. It's, in, it's in Japanese only, though. So <laughs> I have to start teaching in English, too, because, you know, uh, this year I'm going to write 17 books. This year? Yeah. So I already uh, published about 10 books, uh, you know, right. online and offline. But anyway, so you have to be in the zone, as you know. You know, so uh, it used to be like, I have to be in the right zone and then I, I was in and out. So yes. I realized maybe it's easier for me to live in that zone. So I don't have to go out and in again. So yes. I'm in this writing zone. I live in, I'm living in there. So like I feel I have a, uh, like 30 seconds, I write a few lines. And if I have five minutes, I can write a page. So. My content's, content is in here. It's almost like a, you know, the beer uh, station at the bar. Okay. It's, I can just fit in, you know. So I'm writing three books at the same time. So I'm writing this on happiness, this on healing your money wounds, and this for money EQ. So I'm writing, you know, um, like, okay, and then just glass, and then glass. So uh, I always write. So I have a chauffeur, and in the back of a mini van, luxurious van, I have a desk. So I can write in my car too. And I have uh, uh, many study rooms. There are about five rooms. So in there, in each room, there is this MacBook. So whenever I open up, uh, in 10 seconds, it's synced, right? To my wow. uh, cloud. So uh, <clears throat> I can start writing. So I'm living in the uh, writing mode. Yeah. You're in it. You're in yeah. it. Yeah, so uh, you're you're inspiring me so much. So uh, just uh, having a chat with you inspires to write another book. Wow, really? Yes. So, so have I inspired a book title? Yes. What would that be? Yes. So <laughs> oh, um, for um, I'm, I was thinking about writing a book for entrepreneurs. Yeah. You know, uh, um, write a book and become a financially independent person is a you know theme of the book. I'll just come up with a nice title. But, but I think uh, you should write a book, you know, uh, on um, how to become financially independent um, in, in like 10, uh, <clears throat> in 10 seconds or something, you know. And people say, what? No, it can't be. But that's a usually a good title. Wow. Okay. Boom. Yeah, can't because in 10 seconds, you can change, right? Man, if, if, I, if I use that title, then, Ken, then you got you to help me write the introduction and the forward. Right. I'm happy right. to. Yeah, so since we are connected, this is another relationship, right? right. So I'm, I'm happy to help all the people um, that I have an interaction with. So um, I'm happy to help you out or whatever uh, the thing you need. Uh, a lot of people like Jack and John helped me do that. And uh, I asked them one time, why are you so generous with me? And uh, they said, you know, I have won, we have won so many Olympic gold medals, <laughs> two of us, like, like 15 of them, I'm sure. They're in the Guinness book. Sure. So, uh, but I want you to get uh, at least one gold medal because that changes everything. So one uh, international best-selling title uh, lifts you up on, on, on to a different uh, game of business. So I, I strongly recommend you and, and I'll give you all my blessing to start writing uh, a nice book because it's going to put you up to the next level. I receive that. Funny thing, you yeah. mentioned uh, Mark, Mark Victor Hansen because, you know, they're in the Guinness Book of World Records for selling a billion books. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, was at a, I was at a financial conference and uh, he says, how many of you have heard me before or read my book, Chicken Soup of the Soul? 
Like mm-hmm. half the room raised their hand, half the room didn't. Yeah. And then like it says, for those of you that didn't raise my raise your hand, thank goodness we still have a market. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're thinking yeah. abundance. You're thinking abundance. Exactly. So just you have all my blessings. So let me know what I how, how, what and how I can help you. Last question, because I know you're very tied to the insurance industry, which is an industry I'm a part of. You speak a lot on MDRT, the Million Dollar Roundtable. Mm-hmm. What is it about life insurance agents that you seem to gravitate towards and and, and you're always speaking on their platforms in their community? What is it about life insurance? How can this- How, you know, I'm so loved by insurance people and I love them because they're touching people's lives financially. So there are so many ways to um, become a successful insurance uh, salesperson. I always talk about uh, a student of mine who was a lousy salesperson, but who loves animals. And and then one time he was uh, just cold, uh, you know, cold calling, you know, a uh, uh, big ha- house mansion. And there's this German shepherd, and and then he loves that, you know, German shepherd, big guy. And then they're kind of kissing each other. You know how animal lovers yeah, yeah. do. <laughs> and then. The owner, the grandma, was super surprised because he was so famous at barking mailman, FedEx people, and harassing all the neighbors. And so she got curious and just she just ushered him in for a cup of tea. And they became friends and she was a godmother for the neighborhood. And she introduced him to a lot of uh, um, neighborhood and then uh, he became a number one. And he realized, maybe uh, I'll just form a dog lovers club. And then uh, he formed this uh, entire <clears throat> group of people who love dogs. So he arranges a bus tour, barbecue tour, who love dogs, right? And then he doesn't talk about insurance, but he has this network of dog lovers. You know, all the people who want to buy insurance comes to him. So he built his uh, business that way. So his main business is uh, planning on, on the next barbecue at the sea or should go to the mountains. And he's enjoying so much in a nice cabin because his customers just uh, go there. Uh, uh, and then they don't talk about insurance, but maybe at the end of the barbecue said, oh, uh, you are selling insurance, right? And oh, yeah. And uh, do, would, it, would it be possible if we have a, you know appointment sometime next week? OK, you know, call me. And then that's the first uh, and, and also the, the last uh, uh, appointment, you know, because uh, they're ready to just, you know, to, to buy the insurance because they have enough trust. So there are millions of ways to become successful in that industry. So once again, uh, find your gifts and, you know, uh, being loved by dogs, you think it may not bring any money, but for him, it brought him million dollar sales. So just uh, anything can be monetized. That's uh, in one of the other books, but I have to translate a lot of books. So th- thank you for inspiring me uh, to find out the need to translate my other books. Yes, and that's how you make happy money. So Ken, thank you so much for your time. Uh, before I wrap up, where can people find more information about you, Ken Honda? Thank you. So uh, unfortunately, there isn't much information about me in English yet. But uh, it's it's more the more is coming. So you can find kenhonda.com, and uh, I'm sharing a lot of free information, uh, uh, happy money ta- challenge, all that you can d- do for um, uh, free. And if you're interested in learning uh, more with us, I'm not teaching. Oh, I I'm teaching, but I'm learning with with all the uh, community members. It's called Arigato Living Community. Uh, we just meet uh, a few times a month, and I, I I answer all the questions in the community members. And now there are only 500 people, so it's a small community, but I think it's growing. So uh, if you uh, feel the call, please join me in there too. So I do. I'm going to do a lot more Facebook Live and other things. So hopefully I can do more in English. So okay. thank you for your invitation. If we can purchase your book, and I'll, I'll, if if I can get, uh, let's say. A dozen books, and we can get you. Can we get you to autograph it, and and uh, we can that we can get that to our audience. Yo, yeah, I'm I'm happy to uh, send you ones uh, from Japan because I, you know, I'm a giver, so I, I don't charge people that way. I just um, I'm happy to share my books, and uh, uh, whoever wants a copy, I'm happy to give you one. Well, we're gonna find a way to get your books. I like to purchase on behalf of the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel, and if you can autograph uh, a dozen of them, and uh, for those of you. Drop your biggest takeaway from this conversation with Mr. Kananda in the comment section below, and we'll randomly pick 
a comment and a social media profile, and we'll award Great. you a book on behalf of Ken Honda and the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel. I'm so happy to be able to give you. So don't, don't be shy to ask for one. Amen. That being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, if you're following us on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're following us on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. On behalf of Ken Honda, and happy Monday. Happy money. Happy money. It's just happy just saying that. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Matt, for your invitation. I really enjoy having chat with you, and good luck with the book. You got it, 100%. Appreciate you. Till we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, be money smart today.